Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We've got a great show lined up, and we'll get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Got a chance to talk to Mike Kepenstrahl recently, and they, uh, they really are doing well out there. And, uh, Appreciate everybody coming out there and taking those courses and trying to make yourself, a, you know, have a better career and all. So go by and check them out at Haney Technical Center. A uh, high today is going to be 76. A low tonight, 52. That's a difference now. These night temperatures, which, you know, last week it was in the 40s. It was still cold last week. Uh, the big news this morning, the water temperature is going up to 63 degrees. That's one more degree now. It's, uh, this, it's looking good for this week. It, you know, air temperature is warmer. And the water temperature is already going up, and you know it's just uh, Tuesday morning. Our river readings, I, I don't have a chart for you, but I, I can tell them uh, the Appalachian Coal at Blunstown is 11.9, and the Choctaw at Caribbean is 9.2 and dropping. Of course, the big news this week is beginning with spring. March the 20th always begins our our spring season. That's tomorrow, and it, you know I think it's going to come in the azaleas and, and everything just bloom so so well, all the rain and everything. But uh, spring is, is here. Uh, Let's take a look at our tide chart real quick. The good week of tides today is the 19th of March. We have a low tide this morning at 2.03 and a high tide at about the middle of the afternoon at 3.10. So it's going to start going out after the middle of the afternoon. So if you like a fast uh, going, outgoing tide, you're going to be able to, to go ahead and get, get some uh, action, you know, you know, around probably 4.30 or 5. You still have about an hour and a half, two hours Sunset today is going to be at 6:54, so almost 7 o'clock. So, if it goes low tides at 3:30 at the uh, at the P at the uh, jetties, you're going to have plenty of time to fish a good outgoing tide late in the afternoon. If, uh, if you like to catch a redfish or something like that. Now we've been doing our river readings. I want to bring you this is a chart I had last year with, when the Apalachicola Blunstown was reading, you know, so low. I stopped by there and took a picture at a boat landing right there where to do the river reading, right right there uh, uh, at Blunstown. And right here is below a foot. Now it's reading this morning right at 12 foot. So and it's got up, you know, it's got away up there around 19. So you can see the fluctuation, the variation we have right there in the in the river readings and all. So that's a, it, it, it sometimes gets out of the bank and all. Our marine forecast: we have a north northeast wind, and it's going to be switching to south southeast uh, sometime during the day. It's going to be blowing about 12 miles per hour, and the seas will be two to four. And like I said, the sunset uh, today will be six. 54. All right, that takes care of our marine weather, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We had a you know good weekend of pictures and all, and everybody sent some pictures in, so we'll get started with a nice sheephead. Check this out, a nice sheephead being caught here. This is a, uh, I'm sorry, we got to get the camera set up. <laughs> we, uh, we jumped right into it too fast. We got, we got to settle down. Uh, the sheephead fishing, you know, in February, March is, is excellent, and there's some, been some really big sheephead brought in, and uh, you know, catch them on fiddle crabs if you can. If you, that's the best bait you can use right there. If not, just shrimp, live shrimp, and all. But really, the big news this week, past weekend, was turkey season. This is one of my viewers, Trevor Benton. Now, uh, that's right. That's, that's cousin to the big bass fishermen here in town. They're all cousins. That's, a, that's an outdoor family. Those Bentons are. But Trevor just loves the turkey hunt. Uh, send me an email. He said, I th "He said, Coach, I think I'd rather do this more than anything. It's, it's turkey hunting. That's a nice gobbler. Good job on that. Okay, uh, here's Zach with Keith, and you know what? Uh, uh, big mud cat. You know, uh, Zach's a senior there at school, and he uh, is really good outdoorsman. What is it? High water. We talked about how much uh, fun it was to go cat fishing, and Zach went Friday night, or maybe that might have been Saturday night. But anyway, caught a nice, nice mud cat there. All right, our next picture. Uh, actually, this is going to be." Uh, a tower. Now look, it's not a platform. This is a tower for sale, and uh, I'll give you all the information on it. This is a uh, uh, see the PVC uh, around it, the PVC popping all around it. Okay, this is a uh, one of our viewers. I'm gonna have to uh, get the details on this later, but he's gonna be coming out spring break, and that's fifty dollars. But anyway, here's here's another shot of it here. I'll, I'll give you information later on the show, and uh, but that's for sale for fifty dollars. Not the platform itself now. But the uh, the frame that goes around it—that's really safe. That's really a smart way to fish. And uh, okay, we'll be talking about that more later. Anyway, I was, I was thinking about uh, some things to do for this morning's show, and I can't help but think this time of year 
you know, we keep talking about the fish, uh, about the bus flukes. In fact, I got a call uh, this morning from Barry Miller. He, uh, Barry's an excellent surf fishing uh, guy. He's, and he's, fish, he's from here, he's fishing all his life, and he, he knows the fishing. He's out pumping up fishing. Uh, he and his son-in-law, Chris Paxton, are out pumping up fishing Friday morning at Mexico Beach. He called us once at Winston. He said, I had, I had a cobia on. And he knows what he's talking about now. He said, what happened? He said, it hit. He said, they hadn't caught hardly anything. They were getting ready to leave. All of a sudden, took off on them. And he said, he, he saw it come up to water. He said, it followed him about 20 minutes. He knew he had a cobia. And he said, it was a small one, about a 20-pounder. And he got really close. And, you know, same old story. Those, those cobias are just so strong. He's all rigged out for pompano. And the cobia is so strong, it finally broke off after about a 20-minute fight. But got close enough, he said, it's probably 33, 34-inch, 20-pounder. That, that's the first report of a break-off, and that would have been neat if uh, we would caught the first cobia in, in the surf. So that was at Mexico Beach this past Friday morning. So those little scouts and all coming by. I know talking about the cobia watches, I've, I've checked the guys every day, and uh, they've seen, they've seen, you know, they all said they've seen some, but and, uh, a couple of them hooked up, but I hadn't really uh, had it. And, to my knowledge, none, none of them have been caught yet. So any day this week now, I'm looking for one of these cobia to be caught, but that's good. Uh, uh, Bear was still excited about it. That's a fighting fish, and to catch that on a lightweight uh, pompano rig, uh, that, or to you know get a fight off that, that's really really good stuff. So that goes to my tip of the day. The tip of the day goes back to uh, when I do my book. I, I didn't get to interview Roy Martin, but I did read a lot about him, and I did a little story on Roy Martin and the newspaper. I, I've said this before. I'm gonna pass it on to you because of this time of the year. Newspaper reporter said, "Roy, you got all these he's, he's world record fish uh, in, in different categories, and it's just a predominant fisherman of, of that era, and in, in the surf and on the pier." I said, "Roy, how have you? Uh, how do you get these? Uh, all these records? And all? What's your secret to fishing?" And Roy made this comment. I read this article in, uh, in the newspaper, and Roy said, "You know, I go fishing when they're biting, and I have I have a great picture of a." Uh, of him catching a cobia in the surf, uh, and that, that's his secret. And, and right now, the fish are going to start biting. So if you want to be a great fisherman the next couple of weeks and all, you might want to go Spanish mackerel fishing and cobia fishing, and you're going to get some. It was as simple as that. So go fishing when they're biting, okay? Uh, let's switch channels real quick to, uh, I was reading this. This might be of interest to you right here. This weekend, people are always looking for things to do that's different and outdoorsy. Up in Bluntstown, they have this pioneer settlement, and they're having pioneer uh, pioneer days, folk life days, and this is what uh, they're going to have. It's going to be from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. I'm just going to read, read you some of the things. And they replicate what was going on in, in this era back in the 1800s, okay? They're going to have biscuit making, soap making, uh, quilting, knitting, uh, washing clothes, and an old black pot and all that. That will all be demonstrated. Also, uh, life on the farm, they'll have beekeeping, blacksmithing, uh, wood carving, uh, making making cracklings, churning butter, and using a sawmill. My my granddad used a saw. Had worked at a sawmill over there many many years ago. So all that'd be interesting. That's a pioneer uh, settlement up there at Bluntstown, right as you on, on Highway 20. They do always doing some really good, interesting uh, things at that settlement there. Okay. Uh, all right. That takes care. I, I do have an announcement. Uh, you know my buddy up in Valdosta. They called Tony Bass called, and, and uh, he loves to fish and camp in April like all of us. And he said he started looking to have a nice camper, so they called, his wife called St. Joe State Park any time in the month of April to get a reservation, it was booked. He called St. George Island State Park, they're booked the whole month of April. He called St. Andrew State Park, they're booked the whole month of April. So it looks like a lot of folks uh, are taking our advice and getting out and camping. I, I got tickled on that. I hate that Tony didn't have a place to camp. Uh, the whole month of April, all the state parks on, on the coast are all booked up. And uh, people are, are you know, beginning to realize what a great time to camp and what a great great place to camp there. So anyway, ha keep that in mind. And if, you're going to, if you want to camp later on, you know, try to go and get your reservations ahead of time. People are starting to do that, okay, because we only have just so many state park campsites. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. <sighs> Okay, welcome back. Glad you're with us. Now we're talking about catching redfish and all, and uh, there are three places you're fishing inshore. You can catch them, you can catch them, you know, in, in, in flats. Or you can catch them around around a pass, and also catch them around some docks. And I was this past weekend. I've got some pictures of some docks you can catch them on. So uh, if I don't get to do it tomorrow, then the next day I'm going to show you how to catch, where to catch redfish around some of these docks here 
on the inland uh, waterways and inland uh, on the base system. Now, we had this big quail hunting trip uh, we showed you yesterday. Just had a great time, and that's always finale to my outdoor uh, hunting season. And I really enjoyed being with my friends and all. We got some nice quail, but we got to bring some home as always uh, with, with this group. We, we shoot enough, we, we get enough of, to bring home. So what we did, I wanted to show you, I got a little five minute video and show you how we cook the quail. And it cooked this way for quite some time. I actually cook the dove. When I get dove, I actually a lot of times cook them the same way if it, if it don't fry them. But lately, uh, many, well, lately for a long time now, we've been cooking most of our birds on, on the grill uh, this way, a little simple. And it's not a you know not a secret recipe and all, but they they just taste really really good. So uh, let's sit back and watch uh, uh, cooking quail uh, from from our quail hunt, okay? Yesterday, I had a great opportunity to go quail hunting with my old high school buddies, and we always uh, have enough quail for each one of us to bring some home. Now, I decided this time on this trip, I want to go ahead and I was taking a drive back yesterday. I want to go ahead and show you folks how we, uh, how, how I've always cooked our quail. Now, I'm not trying to be a cooking show or anything like that. I'm just showing you how, how we do it and how we enjoy doing it. Real simple. And what we do now, overnight, we just soak it, marinate it in and salsa along with some chicken marinade sauce okay so this is soaked overnight I cleaned them yesterday afternoon they soaked overnight you can see them in there okay nice nice and I'm gonna show you more of them later but they they've soaked good now what we're gonna do next I'm taking out these jalapenos and place them on a the cutting board and we'll cut off the tip first and don't scratch your eyes after you do this and then we're just going to cut these jalapenos in half because what we're going to do, we're going to put the jalapenos on the quail. Okay? This is just a preparation step. You see, I've already cut some. All right? Okay, now, next step, you're going to take them out of the marinade and you're going to flip them over to get there right here on the breast. Okay? Some good meat right there. Then you're going to take uh, two jalapenos. Okay? And then next, you're going to take toothpicks, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to take the bacon, okay, you're going to put the bacon on one end here, and you're going to actually wrap that bacon around them, okay, that's going to hold the jalapenos there, then you take your toothpick, and we always wet the toothpick, because they're going to burn anyway, so you want them to sort of hold and put them on each side of the bacon, and each side of the jalapeno, okay, then that's, then you're going to sit them over here, that's how you're going to make them up. Like I said, you're just going to take them out of the marinade. Okay. Okay, then you, like I say, you get two jalapenos. One on each side here. Then you get a slice of bacon. Bacon, what, it, what this bacon does, it sort of helps keep them moist. It holds everything together and gives them some flavoring too. Okay. You got it wrapped. Then you get your two picks out. You got the quail pretty well wrapped up, okay? And we set them over here. And that's really all there is to it. And we're going to have eight quail. So, um, and we're going to be in eight. I think we're going to be in good shape. I won't eat with seven. That'll leave one for the rest of the party. Alright, first thing I did was spray, spray the grill, okay, so we're going to put them on here, oh, come apart, you're not careful, you want to try to, I'm going to straighten them up after I get them all on here, line them up, already got roll call, that one's coming apart, so I might redo that one, which is not unusual, Sort of turn them. That's the, that's the right here. All right, we're going to redo this. Okay. 
All right, that's a little cubby quail right there. Got them right over the charcoal. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on them. All right, we're gonna cook them real while. Okay, they've been cooking about 15 minutes. We're gonna take a look at them. I'll turn them one time. Uh, they look pretty good. Don't have a lot of charcoal. They're gonna be cooking good. I, want, I don't wanna leave the top off too long. Um, but they, they're looking good. They're looking real, looking real good. And that's how Panhandle Outdoors cooks the quail. The great thing about it, we were able to harvest the quail, clean the quail, and cook them. You should always eat what you harvest. So that's what we're doing, Panhandle Outdoors. All right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. They sure were good. Uh, you know, I ate more than my share. I didn't eat seven out of eight, but I did eat more than my share. But they're, they're really good and tender and juicy, and uh, that, that uh, bacon keeps some moisture in there, and the jalapeno gives just a certain zestiness to it, and it tastes real good. So give that a try next time you get a bird. And if you don't know, you know, you try you try that on any, any kind of a, a small game like that, okay? That'd be good stuff. Look at our fishing game forecast today brought to us by Mark Cowart at Edgewater Beach Realty at 832 6,000. We're looking at our time this morning at 7, well, at 6.39 to 8.39. And then this evening from 7.03, that's right before sunset now, 7.03 to 9.03. Excellent time uh, this morning and excellent time late this evening. It'll be a good time uh, with some stuff going on with that movement right there. Okay? Now, we're, uh, like we're talking about tomorrow, the first day of spring and, and always to, each year to try to uh, kick off the, the spring marketing campaign, trying to get uh, you know advertisers and for Panhandle Outdoors. And I, I don't like to use the word sponsor because sponsor, you know, you asking it seems like you're asking people to give you something. We really want the people to advertise on our show. We want them to get something in return. And I I've got plenty of testimonials I can show you and and uh, get people to talk to you about how they've had good results by being on the show. You know, Panhandle Outdoors. It's a unique show, and we, we take a lot of pride in it. I know a lot of y'all are proud of it, too. We're talking about it's such a unique area we live in and, and being able to, uh, you know, the kind of people we have here. And I know a lot of people uh, uh, get up and watch it, and we appreciate it and all. There's it's so much on, on TV now that's not good stuff. Uh, you can use the word trash, whatever, but it's just a lot of stuff on TV. And our goal here in Panhandle Outdoors is to bring you uh, good things, you know, good news and, and good information and good entertainment every morning that's 255 times a year in order to do so we have to have you know some good sponsors and we are sponsors advertisers uh we do have some really good ones and but we can always use some more i was looking at a list i was trying to make out a list last night of some categories of people that we do not have and i, I wrote it down here on my on my ipad we don't have a we don't have a lawyer so we need to get a lawyer everybody needs a good lawyer dad always told me that uh, always have a, if you're going to get a lawyer, you get a good one. So we need a good lawyer to help help advertise with us. A, a builder, building's starting to kick back up now. Uh, some kind of in the medical field, uh, eye centers and you know, gastroenterology. I see those guys, people advertise all the time. I promise, uh, you know, I, I don't see near as good as I used to. So, a uh, uh, boat company. Uh, we had a boat company one time, so we need another boat company. Uh, plumber. Everybody needs a good plumber. Uh, carpet company. Restaurants, I go on and on. These are different categories of people we do not have to advertise on our show and keep it going. Uh, I, so I need your help. So if you think of anybody, call me. Give me, a, give me a call or email me, and I will go by, or John will go by and talk to them and visit with them. We have all kind of packages here on the show. And, you know, each spring I like to do a little advertising push, and each fall I do a little advertising push. And uh, we'll keep bringing you the best of the outdoors here on our show. So keep that in mind. Give me a call. and. Uh, we appreciate it. I feel very positive about the show. You know, I, I was thinking this weekend, almost had a, a, a bittersweet thought. Uh, uh, I don't know how long I do Panhandle Outdoors, but I believe, I believe Panhandle Outdoors will always be here. And I think somebody's going to pick up the flag when, when, when I'm not around anymore. I just feel, you know, there's that much interest in it here in Panhandle. So uh, Panhandle Outdoors will always be here. So, you know, we, you know it's just, we're just going to keep it going. It's just, it's just good enough for our community. I think we need to need to do that so that's just some food for thought okay a couple more things now march i forgot to mention this the other day every march and i have not done this yet either we try to get together with the kids and, and a simple thing like and we forget about these simple things enjoying life to go fly a kite and that's always been an outdoor activity i've done it since i was a kid i try to do it with my kids and the grandkids and all but march is ideal month to go fly a kite this uh 
this week it hasn't been as quiet as windy as it has in the previous weeks. It's been too windy. So don't forget to go uh, go fly a kite. Now, I had an uh, email from Bill Angelmine. Bill's out there at the pier uh, fishing. He sent a quick uh, email on, on a pier report. So uh, let me read what he talked about. He said, hey, Coach, as far as fishing, it's been pretty slow. Now, we're all going to get a little too anxious and all. Just be patient. It's going to bust loose uh, pretty soon. But here's the report right here at the pier. It's been pretty slow. And the front piers, uh, uh, they did, in fact, uh, they caught, barely caught uh, 10 uh, barely legal pompano between uh, around 2, uh, between noon and 2 o'clock. And they caught two early morning. That was between noon and 2 o'clock. That's the odd time. Five or six were caught then. And it went on to say uh, two more around, uh, around sunset. So they were scattered. It was two in the morning and then five or six right in the middle of the day and then two right at sunset. So. If you, you got to stay there all day to, to catch that many, it's still, that tells you a sign right there is a little too early. And they're small, too. And remember, those Spanish are going to be real small this time of year. Uh, let's see, I want to say uh, some people stay out there all day and eventually end up with a sheephead. Uh, the redfish have been in most days, but, of course, they're all, they're all too big. Uh, the, if you want to just go catch one for the fun of it, uh, you can go to the pier and, and have a good time to do it. A few black drum were caught one day last week and uh, off one of the piers. I haven't seen any... Uh, Bait balls close to shore. Right? And that's something. Uh, he has a friend who has a who's a helicopter pilot, and he's he's seen some uh, bait balls out in a little deeper water. So that's that's the generally how it's going. Uh, the, the big balls of bait will come in and get, as they get closer and closer to shore. Of course, that'd be better pier fishing as you, as you get there. So all these uh, all these little things are important. We're talking about the fog. We've already had one or two in different areas. So uh, I, I keep repeating myself about we on the verge about the bus loose on it. Uh, so. Uh, just be patient, and maybe one, one afternoon this week or one morning this week uh, we're going to uh, get into them. But uh, that, as my knowledge yet, no Kobe has been caught. There have been several hooked up, but none of them are caught. Okay? So keep us posted, and we'll pass the news on to everyone. And thank you all for those pictures, and we'll keep sharing those every day on Panhandle Outdoors. All right? Now, you be sure sometime today you do something good for somebody. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle On Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle On Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle On Tours.